Hi, I'm Dr. Wilson. I'm a PhD molecular biologist and welcome to my series on debunking the disinformation dozen. The disinformation dozen is a group of 12 individuals identified by the Center for Countering Digital Hate as being responsible for 65% of all anti-vaccine misinformation on the internet. And in this series, I'm going to show you why they deserve the title of disinformation dozen. And today I'm going to be covering a couple that share a spot in the disinformation dozen, Ty and Charlene Bollinger. The Bollingers together run a network of accounts that works to sell DVDs and other content to their viewers. This kind of content makes claims along the lines of COVID vaccines having microchips. Yeah, it goes there. So it's no surprise that they've shared plenty of bogus and already debunked stories about vaccines many of which I've already debunked in this series and throughout the history of this channel. So in this installment of the Disinformation Dozen series, I'm going to go a little further back than COVID with the Bollingers and talk about just how bad their misinformation about cancer is. And as I'm telling you this, remember, these are the people who are making the claims about vaccines today. Here's an interview they gave on a talk show where they went to talk about their new book about essential oils being a cure for cancer. There's other unique uses to essential oils like for instance citrus essential oils like lemon yeah. or grapefruit yeah. or orange they have a, 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 an ingredient in them called d-limonene yes yes so you're right over 200 studies have been shown that d-limonene fights cancer you'll hear them claim over and over again that this and that compound has anti-cancer effects honestly these kinds of compounds are a dime a dozen there are so many different compounds that can be shown to have some anti-cancer properties in a cell culture but often these anti-cancer properties can't be replicated in an actual human body. D-limonene is a perfect example of this because the actual anti-cancer byproduct that has effects observed in cell culture doesn't get up to high enough quantities in the human body to have any real effect. This is pseudoscience, taking a statement that is scientifically true and twisting it in a way to make you believe something that is scientifically untrue. And so it's our mission and our goal in life to save lives. Mm -hmm. And so we came out with a book in 2006, self-published, Cancer right. Step Outside the Box. Yes. And from there, we, it led us on a journey to 2014, where now we make documentaries. And we're reaching people, people by the millions now, but there's still billions left, and we will reach them. Mm -hmm. And we're now we have the joy of, of reaching and, and meeting people that have watched documentaries yeah. that are today, after being sent home to die wow. with cancer, alive and cancer-free. Scientists have definitely asked the question, are alternative cancer therapies better than so-called conventional cancer therapies? And they, of course, did studies to try and find the answer. And the answer is no. Alternative treatments are definitely not better than cancer treatments. It is consistently found that when people decide to not take any conventional cancer treatment methods, such as surgery, radiation, or chemotherapy, and instead go only with alternative therapies, they have a much greater chance of dying. The difference is not as dramatic for every kind of cancer, but it is consistently there. What would you say is the, the top thing that someone needs to do, first thing they need to do when they get a diagnosis of cancer? I think the first thing that, that someone should do, and, and I know that Charlene agrees, is don't panic. Right? Okay. <laughs> because the, the, the modern True. medical system instills fear immediately. Mm -hmm. You're diagnosed with cancer, the doctor says, it's terrible. It's mm -hmm. cancer. And mm -hmm. you've only got a few months left to live. Mm. And at that point, they've just pronounced death on you. Right. Not everyone with a cancer diagnosis has death pronounced on them by their doctor. That's ridiculous. Many cases of cancer are perfectly treatable. It entirely depends on the kind of cancer and the stage at which it has progressed to. Solid cancers in their early stages are easily treatable by surgery. Understanding these different aspects of your diagnosis, what cancer you have, the stage it is, and what your options are, are your best bet in your fight against cancer. Cancer absolutely sucks, and these people are making it suck worse. If you listen to Ty and Charlene Bollinger, you could miss an opportunity to treat your cancer at a stage where it is very treatable. And instead, if you go with alternative therapies, the cancer might progress to a stage where nothing can help you. That is a fate that I wish on nobody. And the fact that the Bollingers actively contribute to situations where this is more likely to happen, whether they want it to or not, is absolutely shameful. They've just instilled fear into you. We know now 
based upon blood analysis that when somebody's in a state of fear, their immune system does not work. Well, that's true. No, fear does not make your immune system not work. They say this about COVID too. It's not true. Yes, fear and stress can weaken your immune system, but it often won't do it to a point where it's clinically significant, meaning it's probably not going to be enough on its own to actually make you more susceptible to disease. It's just not how it works. Which some That's people have survived thing, chemotherapy, yeah. and, and some people are alive to, to tell the story mm -hmm. that they believe that chemo saved their life. Mm -hmm. I'm glad that it did, but it doesn't happen there that often. It actually does happen pretty often. For example, childhood cancers. Today, over 80% of children with cancer will go on to live normal lives after their cancer goes into remission thanks to chemotherapy. This is thanks to hard work done by doctors and scientists like Sidney Farber, who advanced our understandings of chemotherapies and how to use them properly. As funny as it might seem, coming from a guy and a gal that produced documentaries called The Quest for the Cures, <laughs> we do not believe that there are cures for cancer. <laughs> Here's what we mean by that. Okay. We believe that God has provided us with plants, with seeds, Come with on. roots <laughs> that have healing properties that, yes. that supply our body with yes. nutrition yes. and our body heals. Mm -hmm. So our body does the curing. Oh, okay, so they don't have any cures for cancer. They're just telling you that you can make your own body cure cancer if you use their products. Got it. But yeah. why do doctors tell us that the fuel in our body doesn't matter? I know. No doctor says that. No doctor will tell you that what you eat doesn't matter. Where does he get that idea? Don't Gordon. feed cancer with sugar. Right. Don't feed cancer with GMO foods, mm -hmm. non-organic. Okay, this is a common myth I hear, not just with people who push alternative cancer therapies, but a general misunderstanding that I hear pretty often. This idea that cancer loves sugar and that if you don't eat sugar, you'll somehow stop it from growing, it's a complete misunderstanding. It's rooted in a very real phenomenon called the Warburg effect. Otto Warburg was a very brilliant biochemist who discovered this effect where Fast replicating cells, including but not limited to cancer cells, end up changing their metabolic pathways in a way that biases them towards what we call glycolysis or sugar breaking. Basically, the cell doesn't care about efficiency and getting the most bang for its buck. It's just about getting energy as fast as possible. So it's this principle that people think means that cancer loves sugar. And if they stop eating sugar, they'll somehow fight cancer. But there's one really basic flaw to this entire logic. Your body likes to maintain a certain level of blood sugar. Yes, your blood has a regulated amount of sugar in it that is delivering energy to all cells in your body. If you stop eating sugar, your blood sugar levels are going to be maintained because your body is using other sources of fuel to make sugar from the liver and into the bloodstream so that your cells can have a constant source of quick to use energy. So if you have cancer, it doesn't care how much sugar you eat. It's still going to have plenty of energy. It's an amazing thing. If you do that, if you give your body the proper nutrition and yeah. hydration, sometimes cancer just goes away. And that is one of the most dangerous things that the Bollingers can say about cancer. There is a lot you can do to prevent yourself from getting cancer, but you're never fully protected. But if you are someone who ends up being diagnosed with cancer, your best bet is to not listen to Ty and Charlene Bollinger. If that happens, talk to your doctors, talk to your oncologists, do your best to understand your situation and what your path moving forward might look like depending on which options you take. Do not forego conventional treatment in hopes of curing your cancer with alternative treatment, especially not if your cancer is treatable. Don't listen to Ty and Charlene Bollinger, who live in a $1.5 million mansion funded by the misinformation that they push to their vulnerable audiences. And during this pandemic, they've gotten even richer by pushing that same level of nonsense about COVID-19 and vaccines. Well, that's going to do it for this video. I think that clearly shows that Ty and Charlene Bollinger have no idea what they're talking about in terms of science and are just interested in selling their DVDs and books and seminars to you. As always, the links to all of the science that I talk about in this video are linked in the description below so that you can check it out for yourself and see for yourself that Ty and Charlene Bollinger are straight up grifters. Thanks for watching this episode of the Disinformation Dozen series. If you liked it, don't forget to subscribe so you can join me next week where I'll be debunking Dr. Ben Tapper. See you then.